This is a film on the bottom of page one of the notes. It just gives you some examples of the different sizes listed here for the different types of film, like 14 by 7, 11 by 14, 10 by 12. You probably want to memorize those numbers, okay, as the different sizes of film that we use. All right, we have a couple of types of film. We have screen film and non-screen film. Non-screen film is an older type of film, and they stopped using it because it, it required too much radiation. Okay, in other words, if you're doing an x-ray with screen film and with non-screen film, you would need to use more radiation or more milliamps for that non-screen film. So it's an old type of film that's not used anymore. What we have now is screen film. Okay. Now, when we talk about screen film, there's two types. There's uh, fast speed and slow speed. So I'm going to put a few notes on the board, uh, some things that you need to know about fast speed and slow speed film, because they're not in here. All right, so you have two types of film. You have what's called fast speed film and slow speed film. These are the two types of film of screen film. All right, a couple of things to remember about fast speed. It's also called rare earth. It, it requires low amounts of radiation, so you don't have to use quite as much radiation with this type of film. This is the kind of film that you use for x-rays of the extremities. What would be some examples of extremity x-rays? The wrist the hand, the fingers, the feet, okay? Inside the x-ray cassette, you're gonna get a, a green light that shines whenever you take the x-ray. So that's why we have, that's why I wrote it in green, because the film is sensitive to the green light. For the fast speed, for the slow speed film, it's also called calcium tungstate. That's another name for it. It requires more radiation. So in other words, if you're using calcium tungstate film, which is slow speed film, you're gonna turn up the MA more, okay? For example, if you're doing a chest x-ray, you're gonna probably use at least 150 MA, maybe 200 MA. So you're using more radiation for this x-ray. I wrote it in blue because it's sensitive to blue light. So there's going to be a blue flash of light inside the x-ray cassette when you um, take a picture with that type of film. So there could be several questions on the test based on these notes right here about the two types of film. Okay, also in the notes on page two, it tells you a little bit about the cassette. All right, this is a hard plastic that this cassette is made out of. It's called Bakelite, B-A-K-E-L-I-G-H-T. The border around the cassette is a metal. It's made out of aluminum metal, okay? And the cassette is light tight. As long as you hear it click, we can take it out here into the regular light, and when the film is inside of here, it's not gonna mess up the film. Inside, once again, the intensified screens, it tells you in the notes there on page two a little bit about the intensified screens. There's different layers to the intensified screens. You have the protective layer, the active layer, the reflect, reflective layer, and the base. So you want to definitely read through that to make sure you understand uh, the different layers of the intensified screens. So out of the, the layers here, the active layer in this intensifying screen is what's mainly responsible for helping to put the image on the film. And in these notes, it tells you that you have a latent image and a manifest image. If you look back on page one for just a minute, the latent image is the image that's on the, the film before you develop it. So in other words, if we just took an x-ray and we go back into the dark room and we take the film out of the cassette, there's something on here, you just really can't see it yet. That's called the latent image, kind of like the invisible image. 
And then we're going to feed this into a machine called a processor that's going to develop the film for us. So it's going to go in one end. It looks, it looks like a big copy machine. So you feed it into one end. And then about a minute or so later, it's going to come out the other side. And then you'll actually see the bones on the film. That's called the manifest image. Okay, so that's the difference between latent image and manifest image. Okay, so a couple of things to remember. You have rare earth film and calcium tungsten. Rare earth is sensitive to what color? Green. And calcium tungsten is sensitive to blue. So with your cassette, if the cassette gives off a green flash of light, it's a rare earth cassette. If it gives off a blue flash of light, it's a calcium tungsten cassette or fast speed, slow speed. So you'd want to put the same type of film with the same type of cassette. In other words, if this is a fast speed film, we want it in a fast speed cassette, vice versa. So just some things that you have to know about the film. All right, the next thing we're going to go over are grids. Okay, and a grid is inside your x-ray table. Just think of it as a filter. All right, when you have to do an x-ray of a body part that's thick, like the femur, for example, you're going to be using more radiation than you would if you were doing an x-ray of the wrist because the femur is a lot thicker. And because you're using more radiation, you have to filter some of that radiation out. If you don't filter it out, then your picture is going to come out too dark. It's like if you're supposed to bake a cake at 350 degrees, but instead you bake it at 500, what's the cake going to look like? <coughs> it's going to burn. It's going to come out really dark. So the same thing can happen to your x-ray, especially when you're using larger amounts of radiation. So that's where the grid comes in. The grid is a filter. Okay, so the first uh, two pages of these notes uh, correspond to page 40 and 41 in the book, and 42. Actually, all the way up to 43. And then we get into grids on page 44. So with x-ray grids, remember a grid is a filter. Okay, the purpose of the grid is to trap scatter radiation, extra radiation. So the table basically, you can think of the table as working as the filter because the grid is built into the table. And you have a couple of different options of what types of grids you might have. You could have a linear grid, a cross grid, or an angle grid. Okay, basically the grid is just, it's a filter that's made out of thin strips of lead. Okay, so those lines represent like really thin strips of lead placed into the x-ray table. For linear, the, the strips of lead just go in one direction, just like you see on the picture there. For crossed, they go in two directions. And for angled, they're, they're actually at an angle instead of straight up and down. Okay, another name for angled grid is focused. Angle or focused. All right, linear is the most common. You want to make sure you know that. But angled is the most efficient. So those are the three types of grids. What they're doing is they're trapping some of the extra radiation so that your picture doesn't turn out to be too dark. 